Thank you for standing by, and welcome to the Monday.com Third Quarter Fiscal Year 2023 Earnings Conference Call. I would now like to welcome Byron Stephen, Head of Investor Relations, to begin the call. Byron, over to you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on today's conference call to discuss the financial results for Monday.com's third quarter fiscal year 2023. Joining me today are Roy Mann and Aaron Zimmerman, co-CEOs of Monday.com, and Elleron Glazer, Monday.com CFO. We released our results for the third quarter earlier today. You can find our quarterly shareholder letter, along with our investor presentation and a replay of today's webcast, under the news and events section of our IR website at ir.monday.com. Certain statements made on the call today will be forward-looking statements which reflect management's best judgment based on the currently available information. These statements involve risk and uncertainties that may cause actual results to differ from our expectations. Please refer to our earnings release for more information on the specific factors that could cause actual results to differ materially from our forward-looking statements. Additionally, non-GAAP financial measures will be discussed on the call. Reconciliations to our most directly comparable GAAP financial measures are available in the earnings release and the earnings presentation for today's call, which are posted on our Investor Relations website. Now, let me turn the call over to Roy. Thank you, Byron, and thank you everyone for joining us today. As we reflect on our most recent quarter, it is with heavy hearts that we acknowledge the recent tragic events that have unfolded in Israel. Our thoughts are with all those affected by recent violent terrorist attacks. At this time, the impact on the current situation of our global operation is minimal, and we remain confident in our ability to meet all our business and financial targets. In terms of revenue, Israel accounts for a low single-digit percentage of our total ARR. While only approximately 7% of our global workforce have been called up for reserve duty, our global employees have gone above and beyond to seamlessly fill any gaps to help ensure our business continues to run smoothly. Furthermore, all of our data servers are distributed globally across North America, Europe, and Australia, ensuring our operations will continue seamlessly. We are monitoring the situation closely and will make necessary adjustment to our plans as needed. Now let me turn to our results this quarter. We are pleased to share that we have achieved another quarter of strong growth, impressive margin improvement, and amazing cash generation. In Q3, we continue to demonstrate our ability to scale with efficiency, posting record non-GAAP operating margin of 13%, and a record free cash flow margin of 34%. I'll now turn it over to Iran to walk you through some of our product highlights this quarter. Thank you, Roy. We remain focused on our multi-product strategy and ensuring that our products can successfully enable cross-functional collaboration for our customers. Our new products continue to show a remarkable cross of opportunity with 2,534 initial work management accounts adopting one of our new products. We are dedicated to providing exceptional solutions that meet the evolving needs of our customers, and we believe that our new products will play a pivotal role in achieving this. Our target is to open access to our new Monday Sales CRM and Monday Dev products to all customers by the end of Q1 of next year. In Q2, we've successfully completed MoneyDB 1.0 with the completion of that phase, all Monday customers have been transitioned to our new cutting-edge infrastructure, and initial feedback has been amazing. Users are noticing a meaningful boost in performance and capabilities of the WorkOS platform. Our next phase, MoneyDB 1.1 dashboards, is now live and already showing significant improvements in load times and performance of our largest and most complex dashboards. We're also beginning to see great initial results from our new Monday AI capabilities. Specifically, the AI for Formula Builder and the AI Solution Builder. Formula Builder is already saving users time and effort, and to date has helped over 5,000 users build advanced formula capabilities. We're excited by the opportunities we see ahead as we seek to generate meaningful value for our customers through the power of AI. 
The AI Solution Builder is also receiving very positive feedback from customers who are utilizing it to easily set up fully operational and personalized boards. As always, we are very proud of the Money.com team achievement in this quarter, and we remain highly confident in our opportunities ahead. As a reminder, we will be hosting our first Investor Day as a company at our New York City Elevate conference on December 6. We look forward to seeing many of you in person and sharing our vision, strategy, and product roadmap, and I need to gain deeper insights into our operations and future plans. With that, I'll now turn it over to Eliron to cover our financial and guidance. Thank you, Eliron, and thank you to everyone for joining our call. Today, I'll review our third quarter fiscal 2023 results in detail and provide updated guidance. We reported strong results in Q3 with record quarterly free cash flow and non-GAAP operating income for the third consecutive quarter. Our results in the quarter demonstrate our consistent execution as well as the healthy customer demand we see for the Monday.com work operating system platform and our products. Total revenue came in at $189.2 million in Q3, up 38% from the year-ago quarter. Our overall net dollar retention rate remains steady in Q3, reflecting our continued resilience through a more challenging macroeconomic environment. While our full year 2023 guidance still assumes NDR to be slightly below 110%, we are encouraged by the signs of stabilization that we witnessed during the most recent quarter. As a reminder, our net dollar retention rate is trailing four quarter weighted average calculation. For the reminder of the financial metrics disclosed, unless otherwise noted, I will be referencing non-GAAP financial measures. We have provided a reconciliation of GAAP to non-GAAP financials in our earnings release. Third quarter gross margin was 89%. In the medium to long term, we continue to expect growth margin to be in the high 80s range. Research and development expense was 28.1 million, or 15% of revenue, compared to 19% in Q3 2022. In the medium to long term, we anticipate R&D expense as a percentage of revenue to be in the high teens as we build out our product suite and scale our work operating system platform both horizontally and vertically. Sales and marketing expense was $101.5 million, or 54% of revenue, compared to 60% in Q3 2022. GNA expense was $15.2 million, or 8% of revenue, compared to 11% in Q3 2022. Net income was $33 million, up from $2.6 million in Q3 2022. Diluted net income per share was $0.64, cents based on 51.5 million fully diluted shares outstanding. Total employee headcount was 1,744, an increase of 98 employees since Q2 23. We expect to continue hiring over the next year with a focus on our R&D product and sales teams as we build out our platform and product suite. Moving on to the balance sheet and cash flow, we ended the quarter with 1 billion and 50 million dollars in cash and cash equivalents at the end of Q3 23, up from 989 million at the end of Q2 23. Free cash flow for Q3 23 was 64.9 million, and free cash flow margin, as defined as free cash flow as a percentage of revenue, was 34%. Free cash flow is defined as net cash from operating activities, less cash used for property and equipment, and capitalized software costs. Now let's turn to our updated outlook for fiscal year 2023. For the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2023, we expect our revenue to be in the range of 196 million to 198 million, representing growth of 31 to 32 percent year over year. We expect non-GAAP operating income of 7 million to 9 million, and an operating margin of 4 percent to 5 percent. For the full year 2023, we now expect revenue to be in the range of 723 million to 725 million, representing growth of 39% to 40% year over year. We expect full year non GAAP operating income of 47 million to 49 million and an operating margin of approximately 7%. I'll now turn it over to the operator for your questions. Operator? At this time, I'd like to remind everyone, in order to ask a question, press star then the number one on your telephone keypad. We ask that you limit yourself to one question and one follow-up question, please. We'll pause for just a moment to compile any questions. 
Again, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad now. Our first question comes from the line of Cash Rangan with Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you very much, and uh, I'm happy to hear that your employees are safe, and I wish uh, that, uh, uh, that your workforce continues to be very safe uh, with the tumult that's going on. Uh, with respect to the business, first of all, congratulations on the quarter. I'm curious to, to hear your further expand the thoughts on the stabilization you saw in the net expansion rate in the quarter, and also, as you take a step back with the broadening out of the platform and the capabilities and the different buying centers and the personas that you can go after, such as dev, CRM, and who knows what's in store in the future, how is the go-to-market approach of the company changing? You, you know, you're, you're good entrepreneurs. You've been through multiple businesses before, and you can understand the nuances of how go-to-market might have to evolve given the broadening of the product. Just here is your, here are your thoughts on those two things. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, Kesh. This is Eliran. I will answer your first question, and uh, then I will refer to Iran to address uh, your second question. So with regard to the stabilization of the NDR, as a reminder, we are looking at uh, NDR as a weighted average of the last four quarters. So what we saw when you're looking at the trailing 12 months, basically, it's that it's flattening. We saw a decline in the past um, that was uh, as part of also the macroeconomy headwinds and the fact that expansion was lower than we anticipated or what we saw in the past. But over the last few months, we saw that on a month-by-month -month basis, basically it's flattening, and this is uh, encouraging us uh, to believe that uh, there is going to be potentially uh, stabilization to the long term. And this is also driven by the fact that we see a very healthy top-of-funnel uh, demand and uh, additional new customers that are joining uh, the platform. Yeah, and um, this is Iran Cash. Um, so um, regarding the new products, our product ecosystem, and how it helps in terms of our go-to market, so definitely having multiple personas and multiple verticals really helps uh, in two ways, really. Uh, one is our ability to do both performance marketing uh, across multiple verticals, just make our acquisition much more efficient. And this goes all the way to um, events and exhibitions, and we have different, um, basically, personas that can buy the software. But more than that, it can it allow us to be more aggressive because our LTV for each customer is much greater. Uh, we don't just compete in one vertical, but a customer might start with a CRM and then expand into work management or vice versa. So the total LTV of each customer is much greater, which allows to be potentially more aggressive um, going forward in how we acquire customers. So it definitely has opened us our ability to acquire customers and expand them over time. Wonderful. Many thanks and congratulations again. Our next question comes from the line of Pidjalam Bora with J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Oh, thanks, uh, and congrats on the quarter from uh, from me as well. Um, can I uh, um, ask you on the top of the final comment that, that you just made, maybe help us understand that momentum going into Q4 so far, and if the conversion rates of the top of the funnel so far in Q4 that you have seen has been consistent or not versus Q3? Yeah, so uh, in terms of customer acquisition and top of funnel activity, uh, we see still very strong demand, uh, very stable. It's across all customer size, both SMB and uh, more S enterprise customers. Uh, we continue to grow our enterprise segment. Uh, it grew 57% uh, year over year uh, in the last quarter. Um, and like we've mentioned, like the only impact that we're seeing right now is less seat expansion from existing customers, but apart from that, uh, our customer acquisition, uh, the momentum that we see with new customers across all products uh, is very stable and strong. Understood. Thank you for that. And um, if I can ask you on the, the regional structure, the hybrid regional structure that, that uh, you have kind of embarked upon, a few questions on that, just um, on that um, change that you're making. Can you help us understand what portion of your sales is driven by outbound today? Uh, and where do you see that kind of going? Um, and as these regional heads kind of start building their teams, uh, teams, should we expect kind of an acceleration in, in the sales rep hiring going into next year? Uh, and and um, how are you layering in kind of the CRM and the dev uh, go-to-market in that outbound motion? Um, 
Yeah, Pinino, this is Ron. So you were breaking up a little bit. You were asking about the outbound momentum that we see. Is that correct? Yeah, the regional. Did I get it right? I was talking to the regional sales structure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. so basically, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, the regional sales structure that, that you're highlighting, right? You regional sales leadership. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so basically we announced uh, last quarter uh, that we promoted both Jameson uh, to be um, regional manager for, for North America and Dean for uh, uh, APAC region. And definitely it, it, it's part of a movement that we're seeing of stronger presence in both of those uh, regions, but also scaling those regions dramatically. Um, as we said, we're also doing a lot of outbound sales, uh, reaching larger customers, Fortune 500 customers, uh, in addition to our performance marketing. Uh, so for us, it's, it's a continuum of that momentum as a company, and it just gives us over time more access to uh, larger and larger enterprises, and we continue to scale that effort. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Steve Enders with Citi. Please go ahead. Okay, great. Thanks for taking the question, and, and glad to hear everyone is uh... – Everyone is safe over at uh, over at Monday. Um, I guess maybe just would like to kind of start on on that part. You know, I think you call that seven percent of employees have been called up to reserves uh, at this point. I guess how do you go about managing the organization when you have you know that level of uh, of disruption? And um, I guess secondarily, like as you think about hiring, and it seems like those continued expectations for that going into next year. Uh, how do you you know? think about uh, what that means for future hiring plans and backfilling uh, some of those, you know, called up individuals there. Um, hey, it's uh, Roy. So uh, the impact we have right now on the plans we have is minimal. Uh, there is an impact, uh, but but it's uh, something we're, we're dealing with and it's, uh, it has a very short term effect. Regarding hiring, we have a, a, a very strong hiring plan for uh, next year and also this year, so we're on track, and that's uh, been going uh, well. Yeah, maybe, uh, Stephen, this is Iran. Um, I can add that Israel only counts for a low single-digit percentage of our ARR, and there's very little impact over there, although we see a little bit, but very small impact, and it's a small part of our revenue. Uh, and also in terms of data servers, uh, it's all distributed globally. Uh, we don't have currently any data centers in Israel, uh, across North America, Europe, Australia. So, so in terms of data integrity, servers, operations, we see no impact. Uh, and as we mentioned on the business side, it's, it's minimal impact mostly um, to Israeli customers. Okay, gotcha. That's, uh, that, that, that's helpful. Um, and then... Just on the, on the free cash flow in the quarter, I mean, you know, really, really strong there. I guess anything to call out uh, that was either one time in nature? Or how should we be thinking about, um, you know, maybe some of the puts and takes there as we think about, uh, you know, going into next quarter or next year? Uh, hi, Steve. It's Eliran. Uh, yeah, so, you know, 34% obviously is a, is a very high percentage, and we would like to think about it as a one-off. Although we said that we are going to be, uh, slightly above uh, 20%, you know, originally uh, when we gave a Q2 guidance, so by the end of the year. Uh, it's mostly about, I would say, disciplined spending, uh, you know, as part of the improving efficiency. Uh, and even though with, uh, you know, the macro environment, uh, we have a very uh, consistent customer collections and billings, we don't come across any significant issues. Actually, it's very healthy uh, and also, just to be fair, with over $1 billion in, bank, uh, in the bank uh, uh, on the balance, uh, we continue to generate nice returns with the environment of inflation. So all of the above is, is very healthy, healthy for us in terms of uh, efficient uh, free cash flow. Okay, perfect. Thanks for taking the question. Our next question comes from the line of Brent Bracelin with Piper Sandler. Please go ahead. Good morning here. I uh, will echo the uh, the best wishes and, and support here for, for you, your family, and colleagues uh, impacted by the uh, the tragedy in Israel. 
Maybe Roy, obviously, super impressed with the strong execution, given some of the, the challenges. Obviously, we're seeing some mixed trends in SMB. I wanted to pivot a little bit towards you know, the, the future product, uh, specifically the, the Monday.com AI Assistant. Can you just talk uh, a little bit about what you're seeing there in, in that beta, uh, what the early response has been, and I have one quick follow-up. Um, yeah, hi, it's Roy. So the AI was uh, very nicely accepted uh, with building boards. So we used the uh, assistant to kind of help uh, customers build things that are usually complex, like the formula builder and, and like the board and the workflow itself. Uh, and we saw that people kind of were surprised about the suggestions they got and said like uh, they were really happy with the boards they got from the AI. So it's kind of like it's really an assistant uh, that onboards customers and help them get the most out, most out of the system uh, right now. Very encouraging. And then I guess as a follow-up for you, Eleron, um, you know, impressed here by continued improvement in margins. Uh, it sounded like you're leaning a little bit in on performance mar uh, performance uh, marketing. The LTV to CAC sounds like it's improving. Can you continue to kind of sustain, you know, margins here even while getting a little aggressive um, with uh, with performance marketing spend? Just given the the returns you're seeing right now. So, uh, Brent, hi. Um, I think that you know the the, the lever that is most uh, I would say. Uh, impactful of the numbers on a, on a quarter basis is, is definitely the performance marketing because uh, it allows us either to spend when we see the return or to hold back uh, if we don't see the return. From our perspective, uh, things have not really changed from the last few quarters. Um, so, uh, you know, we kind of manage the spend in accordance with the, with the uh, returns that we see. We don't see anything. It's not getting any better, but it's not getting any worse in terms of uh, what the returns that we are seeing. Uh, you know, maybe some of the competitors has already started to spend more on the performance marketing. Uh, but for us, it's pretty much what we anticipated or what we saw in prior quarters. We actually thought that, uh, you know, when the year goes by, we might see a more aggressive uh, behavior from other players, but uh, we didn't so far. So as long as uh, it meets our return criteria, we continue to spend. Um, and if it will be that uh, a more aggressive spend will provide us better results, then we are going to do it. Great to see. Impressive execution here, guys. Thanks. Our next question comes from a line of Arjun Bhatia with William Blair. Please go ahead. Perfect. Um, thank you, guys, and I'll add my uh, best wishes uh, to you all uh, in, in Israel. Um, First, maybe maybe just to start on, um, I noticed that the um, the up market trends look very strong, right? Especially the uh, the percentage of ARR that you're getting from your large 50k plus customers. C can you just talk a little bit about if you're seeing any difference in customer behavior between those larger enterprise customers that are deployed on Monday versus smaller customers, whether it's in terms of uh, upsell or you know, seat expansion, um, et cetera. Thank you. Yeah, hi Arjun, this is Zaran. So, um, yeah, overall, uh, in terms of our enterprise accounts, uh, as I've mentioned, we see great momentum. Um, those enterprise accounts uh, tend to upgrade more and increase their seat count more over time. Uh, so, definitely, we see higher levels of NDR. Um, in terms of usage, there's a, a, a little bit of a difference between the way SMBs use it and enterprise customers. SMBs, uh, what we see is they usually consolidate on Monday, uh, managing a lot of departments and almost their entire operation on Monday. Uh, in enterprise customers, usually we solve two or three kind of main business use cases for them, and then over time they might add more departments, uh, but it's more of a gradual process. Uh, but definitely um, in terms of um, retention, stability, growth. Uh, we invest a lot in, in enterprise customers because over time um, they generate more revenue and, and tend to expand more. Okay, um, got it, perfect. That's uh, very helpful. And then just going on to um, Monday DB, um, it sounds like the next phase here is going to be on um, 
API enhancements and then improving scalability. How much is that impacting your ability to go after these larger customers and uh, you know, show them the scalability and the improvements you're making in infrastructure to get them to use Monday? Is that something that you're seeing already or something that we anticipate further down the road as uh, more DB versions get rolled out? Yeah, this is Ron again. So, so definitely you touched on, on the point here because uh, I think one of the things that really help us accelerate um, scale within enterprise customers is MondayDB. Um, we mentioned this during the beginning of the earning call, but uh, we got great feedback uh, from version 1.0. We saw customers already scaling their operation uh, and how they use Monday. Uh, and now with the release of 1.1, we've really accelerated a major part, which a lot of enterprise use, which is dashboards. Uh, it's been a significant boost to how they use the platform. And usually uh, it's managers and high-level management that use dashboards. So definitely this is a huge game changer for our ability to scale within the enterprise. And we have a lot of other um, uh, subversions that we uh, aim to launch in terms of MondayDB. And we feel that each iteration really helps us uh, accelerate our penetration into larger enterprises. All right, perfect. Thank you, and congrats on the uh, strong execution here, guys. Our next question comes from the line of Derek Wood with TD Cowan. Please go ahead. Oh, great. Thanks. It's Andrew, and I'll echo my uh, our thoughts to everyone uh, in Israel. Um, Eleron, on the sales CRM, uh, strong net new growth, uh, 11,000 customers is about 6% of your total base. As that keeps growing, do you think we could see this become a material contributor to revenue next year and also moving into the mid-market? Uh, hi, Derek. It's Eliran. Yeah, so uh, CRM is growing uh, really nicely. Um, and, you know, just as a reminder, we plan to finish opening access to the CRM and dev to all customers by the end of Q1 next year. So definitely we expect this to continue to grow. Um, you know, although it's still early days, we just announced it earlier this year, but uh, cross-selling opportunity looks re encouraging. Uh, and, you know, since we have introduced the product to it, we have 2,500-ish uh, uh, work management accounts that have added, you know, to the additional product. So I think that over time, with uh, the fact that we are increasing the sales reps number and we are going to focus on cross-selling and upselling, uh, I think that uh, we are going to see a more proactive sales motion and, and it's going to be resulted in uh, further growth next year. Great. And then also for you, Eloran, uh, the ARR from 50K plus a nice uptick to 31% of ARR, any color on what drove that? And is that mostly existing expansions? Are you seeing larger lands too? And, and should this kind of continue to uptick into next year? Yeah, Derek, I think it's all of the above. It's, uh, it's, uh, we're landing bigger. We are, you know, we have a multi-product uh, strategy that now customers find us to be uh, part of their core, uh, you know, business operation. Uh, the fact that we are growing the sales team and we bring people who are experts in selling to enterprise accounts. So all of the above, I think uh, once you unlock the value of Monday and you see how it contributes to bigger organizations and a, and a bigger audience within the organizations, this is something that continues to drive the up-market motion, together with, of course, the Monday DB. Awesome. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Brent Phil with Jeffries. Please go ahead. Thanks. Um, Eliron, can, can you just walk us through what you're seeing, you know, through the start of the quarter, uh, you know, in the last month? Have you seen any change in customer behavior, or is it is it the same consistency you're you're speaking to that you saw in, in the last quarter? Hey, Brent. Uh, we're we're still seeing, uh, you know, what we saw in prior quarters. As I said earlier, it's not getting any better, but it's not getting any worse. I think there is still, uh, you know, a lot of pressure on the economy. Uh, I would say sometimes choppy, you know, customers still uh, very cautious on their spend. Uh, sell cycles are still taking longer. Uh, but, you know, on, our, on the other end, we are still seeing a very healthy, uh, you know, customer demand and top of funnel activity. So I think these are kind of setting one another uh, and contributing to our execution. 
And, and just back on the enterprise, um, that that momentum looks really encouraging. I, if there are one or two, you know, customer data points, and not necessarily naming the customer, but maybe what you've been shocked at or, or uh, has been has been significant in terms of milestones. Is there in terms of seat count or in terms of how they're deploying? Can you is there any more color you can add to what is giving you encouragement? What you're seeing in that segment? Yeah, Brent. So, so still, our largest deployment is is about 7,000 seats. But uh, maybe I can share more color that uh, we are seeing, you know, very interesting deals in the pipeline. We see more momentum of larger enterprise interested in in uh, buying Monday and do uh, a much wider deployment. So, definitely, we see this this momentum uh, within our our customer interest and customer, um, you know, pipeline that we're seeing. So that gives us a lot of inside that um, we're evolving and it opens the door to bigger and bigger deals going forward. Yeah, and maybe, maybe Brent, just to add to Iran, this is Iran. the level of engagement that we see, we have some uh, internal metrics like uh, active, active paying people and, uh, you know, uh, active seats, that then we are seeing strong momentum as well. So this is something that is encouraging for us to believe that, uh, you know, we're going to see continued growth in the enterprise usage within the existing customers and new customers. Good to hear. Thank you. Our next question comes from a line of George Iwanek with Oppenheimer. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question, and I'll have my best questions for everyone's safety. Uh, maybe going back to the AI topic, uh, can you give some perspective on how you feel this maybe changes the competitive environment? Uh, hi, it's uh, Roy. Um, so I, I think like customers don't really know what to expect from AI. It's not as if like everyone is demanding this or that. I think we're in a phase that uh, everyone is trying to explore what works, uh, and it's not the easiest thing to make uh, to turn AI into a really great product for customers. And I think we're on a really good track with the results we've uh, we've seen and shared. So um, I don't think uh, it, it's still like something that is uh, materially competitive, but it might be in the future. And then just following up on all the new product additions that you're putting into the platform, uh, can you maybe provide some perspective on pricing and the type of leverage you're getting from the, the additions? Yeah, so we're we're experimenting with things and and seeing uh, what what are we going to do with pricing. Uh, we feel that like the uh, introduction of new products will allow us to cross sell and then extract uh, uh, and give more value to customers uh, uh, and and like allow us to to have like a higher dollar value for each uh, customer. Uh, alongside other improvements that we're making to the platform in, in various uh, advancement in every area, in the work management, in the CRM, uh, that will also expose us to uh, new customers and new use cases, and again, like uh, improve that cycle of, of expansion. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of DJ Hines with Canaccord. Please go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, I'll echo the sentiment of others and add my congrats on the quarter. Um, I'm curious what you're seeing in terms of activity and engagement in the marketplace ecosystem. It seems like, you know, as you make improvements in scalability and continue to roll out new product, there's just that much more surface area for partners to build around. So curious if you're seeing any signs of that playing out and what it could mean for the model over time. Yeah. Um, I did a, it's Iran. So... Uh, definitely, we see good momentum there. We're starting to see more and more uh, kind of more significant uh, ARR coming from our marketplace. Uh, the partnership with both Upfire and Adaptivist are growing really nicely. It takes time, but uh, currently those um, two partners have some of the most popular apps in our marketplace. So definitely, we see the momentum that they bring and their experience. It's definitely helpful. Um, so, so we're very encouraged uh, with everything we see. We see some very cool applications built, not just for the platform, but for each one of our um, 
app. So for CRM, for work management, for dev. Um, so definitely this really enriches the marketplace and the opportunity for each one of them. Uh, in addition to the bigger uh, partners, we continue to see a large momentum of smaller and indie developers that, that build on the marketplace. So very, all in all, like we're very encouraged with the development and the type of applications that are being built. Yeah, okay, good to hear. And then how do you think about sizing the opportunity for Monday Dev, maybe relative to CRM? I mean, I, I assume it's probably narrower, but, but trying to get an understanding of kind of the composition of your customer base, how big that developer footprint is, and kind of what it means for the serviceable opportunity for Dev in the base, you know, realizing it's a multi-year journey. Yeah, so so this is a run again. Um, yes, so so um, look, I mean, Dev Dev is is uh, it has great momentum. Uh, it's it's a little bit younger compared to CRM, but again, if we compare it to how we grew as a company, like it, it, it is growing faster than money itself. So also has great momentum as a product. And I think there's great players right now in this market that prove that you can build a huge business out of it. So we definitely, um, you know, encouraged by the growth. We encouraged by seeing the type of customers that adopt the product. Uh, still, we have a lot of features we need to complete, but all in all, it, it looks uh, very promising, uh, as promising, I would say, as CRM um, a year ago. So definitely something we invest a lot into uh, and very encouraged with the results we see so far. Great. Thanks for the color. Again, as a reminder, the floor is now open for your questions. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad now. Our next question comes from the line of Scott Berg with Needham and Company. Please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Nice quarter, and I will certainly echo the uh, concerns um, with all what you all are dealing with right now. Good luck. A um, couple questions for me. Eleron, you talked about uh, sales and marketing, expecting to be in the high teens. You know, in the intermediate term, your spend in sales, or excuse me, R&D in the, in the high teens, your R&D spend really hasn't been in the high teens for several quarters. How should we think about your investments there? Is, are we going to see kind of a ramp back up to the high teens, or, or you know, what does that kind of balance look like, I guess? So it's, uh, so it's a great question. I would say that uh, in fiscal year 23, to your point, we probably are now looking at more mid-teens. Um, so first of all, uh, when you think about hiring, we continue to hire in R&D. We continue to investment in R&D. Uh, the reason why we see a lower cost to a certain extent uh, on the short term, because on the longer term, we believe it's going to continue to grow. It's first of all, the you know, FX currencies, the R&D team is mostly based in Israel, all of the people. Uh, so we took advantage or we benefit from the fact that the uh, uh, the dollar was strong versus the Israeli shekel. Uh, we had some accounting things like allocation uh, that impi impacted both costs uh, of sales as well as R&D. Um, you know, uh, and it is mostly going to be dependent on the recruitment progress. So we continue to hire aggressively. R&D people are not easy to find. Uh, always uh, there is a good fight for them. Uh, but we will continue to hire and expand the team, um, and, uh, you know, we believe that uh, for the next year we're going to see this number grow. Uh, understood. Helpful. Thank you. And then from a follow-up perspective, um, you talked about net revenue retention trends start to trough out the last couple quarters. I, I know it's items like CRM and DevTools are still reasonably new in terms of customer adoption and how you're selling them. But from your early statistics, how are those, uh, you know, modules or, or tools impacting your net revenue retention rate? Are you seeing some, you know, different trends there versus the overall, you know, work management platform? Thank you. Yeah, this is Iran. So, look, it's still early days um, in terms of, you know, uh, just the uh, amount of revenue and our experience with it, but. Um, I can share that overall in terms of engagement and potential extension, um, we, we see an upside there. Um, I think it's just because of the nature of the product that some of them are more sticky than others and uh, kind of once you get a, a team, uh, start using it, uh, you get the whole department potentially using that tool. 
so definitely we see an option there for HARI and DR, both in dev and CRM. But again, it's still early days, so we don't have a lot of cohort data yet. Uh, but just judging by the nature of usage right now, um, it definitely has an upside there. Excellent. Thanks again. Our next question comes from the line of Taylor McGinnis with UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for taking the question. And like everyone else, uh, I want to extend thoughts to you all and everyone at, at Monday in Israel. And well done on the execution this quarter considering the, the circumstances. So just looking at the 4Q rep guide, it looks really solid. And assuming some upside, we could actually start to see an acceleration in quarter over quarter growth. So first, can you maybe talk about what you've seen in terms of the demand environment that's giving you comfort in this outlook? And then second, there's been you know some evidence in within other software companies this quarter of uh, softening SMB trends and you know some other macro events. So can you talk about um, some of? Can you just provide more color on? The, the assumptions being embedded in the guide for the environment and maybe the level of conservatism for, for some of these events. Thanks. Hi, Taylor. This is Iran. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, so I, I can comment on the demand, and maybe Elon can talk a little bit about the, the guidance for next quarter. So, so uh, in terms of demand, like we mentioned, we see very strong demand, um, not just in SMBs, but also in enterprise customers. Uh, and in terms of usage and extension, we also see positive signs. So overall, uh, like Kelly Ryan mentioned, although the environment is still kind of choppy, uh, like in the beginning of the year, uh, in terms of demand and stability of demand, um, like we feel very comfortable. Uh, so that's in terms of what we see in the market. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything around in terms of guidance for Q4 or... Yeah, so I would say that with regards to guidance, uh, we always report what we know, uh, you know, when we do the guidance, uh, so it takes into account the latest trend that we are seeing, uh, and they're not, they, they haven't really changed much over the year. Uh, as I said earlier, we still have a challenging macroeconomic conditions with some moderate pressure on NDR, and uh, as we mentioned, uh, we continue to expect full year NDR to be slightly below 110%, uh, but we do expect uh, it to level off uh, at the end of this year. Uh, you know, with regard to the top of funnel demand and strong new customer growth, it's, it's offset some of the trends that we are seeing, and I believe this is taking into account the fact that we introduced first Monday DB as well as the CRM and, the, and Dev and, you know, other multiple use cases. So, you know, um, while there is, uh, to summarize, while there is some pressure coming from the macroeconomy, uh, it is definitely offset by, by the top of funnel uh, strong demand that we are seeing from new customers. Great. Thanks so much. Our next question comes from a line of Jason Salino with KeyBank Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Great. Thanks for taking my question. I'll start with maybe a philosophical question. Roy, I, I know you said that it's too early and, and no one really knows yet, but a lot of software companies, including your content uh, collaborative work management peers, you know, are rolling out these AI features and bundling them in the core products. Um, but it seems like AI might become table stakes. You know, if this is the case, how do you think AI can still be a differentiator? Uh, hi. Uh, appreciate the philosophical question. So um, I'll tell you what, like the AI we can divide into two areas. One is the table stakes area, right? Like making AI improve the software itself and its usability. And I think that's, uh, less monetizable, but like improved performance overall of everything. And the other part is adding more productivity uh, components with AI that uh, customers will pay for, and I think there is a, is a good upside. Uh, we're looking at what everyone is doing across the field, not only in productivity in AI, and we're putting a lot of emphasis on it. Uh, we have a strong team uh, working on it. Uh, and I feel we have a lot to say because Monday is a, a true platform uh, and, and we are able to take uh, and, and like make AI very accessible for the customers that come to us and want to build workflows, improve their business. We're really able to take that power and give it to them, but that's like a work in progress and I think that will not be table stakes. 
Great, thank you. And then Eleron, uh, you mentioned having a lot of cash, you know, crossing the billion dollar mark, uh, and you're generating more. Uh, maybe can you speak to some of your capital deployment strategies? Yeah, so, you know, with regards to cash, obviously it's going to be used for a corporate uh, initiative. We're going to continue to invest in uh, investing in the business, bringing uh, and hiring people, uh, expanding the, you know, uh, leadership team, uh, the management team, uh, you know, uh, as well as uh, thinking about non-organic growth opportunities. We are going to look potentially next year at uh, companies, thinking about m and Again, mostly tuck in, equity hiring, uh, you know, complementary uh, products, uh, but this is something that we definitely starting to think about uh, and to deploy potentially in the next uh, 12 to uh, 18 months. Excellent, thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Robert Simmons with DA Davidson. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking the question. So it's great to see the uh, the app CRM and Indev scaling so well. I'm wondering where have you seen the most uh, kind of uptake for, for those by vertical or by geography? Yeah, Robert, this is Ron. So you're asking where do we see the most? Uh, what do you mean, like uptake? Uh, just uh, yeah. Like, like where, where are you seeing the, the strongest adoption um, by customers for, for the for the uh, for, for sales and, uh, and dev? Um, in terms of vertical, like we see we see adoption across all verticals and also across different sizes. I would say in terms of company sizes, we don't see you know large enterprise currently adopting Monday Sales CRM or Monday Dev, but definitely we see the bar rising. Uh, it started with small teams and expanding into hundreds of people, um, and, and it will continue to grow as we add more features and more complexity. But in terms of industry, it's really cross industry, both tech companies and non-tech. Obviously, Dev is is more focused on on tech, but in terms of sales CRM, uh, we really see a wide variety of uh, uh, verticals and and different kinds of companies that adopt the product. Pretty similar to what we saw uh, in, in Monday work management uh, product. Um, yeah, so this is the, the color we have right now. Okay, got it. And then you had two other apps you launched at the same time. Uh, how, how are those performing so far? Hey, can you repeat the question, sorry? How's what? You, you had two other apps you launched at the same time as those two. Uh, how are those performing so far? Are those starting to ramp to expectations? That is, they're a little bit earlier, but um, yeah. Um, um, yeah, well, we have a bunch of products that we launched. Uh, we had uh, Monday Work Forms and Monday Work Canvas that we launched uh, as part of that. Uh, we previously have, we had an initial product called uh, Monday Marketing, but we kind of discontinued that and merged that into Monday Work Management. Uh, and in terms of the other products, Work Canvas and Work Forms, they're still kind of in their initial phase. We see nice momentum there, but it, it's still kind of in a small scale compared to the other products that we have. Great, thanks. Again, the floor is now open for your questions. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star, followed by the number one on your telephone keypad now. There are no further questions at this time. I would like to thank our speakers for today's presentation and thank you all for joining us. This now concludes today's call and you may now disconnect.